Well, uh, excited to be here. I'd like to thank Dr. Verder Julu uh, for his uh, participation today uh, in an exciting study that he's done in the assessment of the technical performance of the flexible 19-gauge EUS FNA needle. Uh, he joins us from uh, University of Alabama, uh, and uh, I was hoping that you could just tell us, uh, first of all, a little bit about EUS, uh, and we're looking at primarily biopsies around the pancreas, uh, and tell us a little bit about the needles that are available, uh, and a little bit about the back background to this study? Well, this is the first needle that is now in the market that is commercially available that is made of nitinol. The 19 gauge needle is very uh, interesting and it has an important role in FNA just because it is capable of not only giving you a cytological aspirate but also giving a big chunk of core tissue for histopathological analysis. Right now the needles that are commercially available for this reason, specifically designed to provide a histological diagnosis, don't work very well across the pylorus, which means when you go into the duodenum, the needles are not flexible. So to overcome the limitation, this needle is made up of nitinol, which works like a flexible mm -hmm. stent in the bile duct. So this increases the maneuverability of the needle, and hence this, re this needle might be a product that can be used for both diagnostic and therapeutic interventions, and for procuring both cytological and histological tissue. So this is nitinol needle, uh, takes a core instead of the standard stainless steel. And the nitinol just is more flexible, is that correct? That is correct. A stainless steel needle, usually after you make a single pass across the pylorus, will have a change in the curvature. And then subsequently when you use the needle, it causes more bleeding and there's a higher rate of technical failure. This needle, because it's made of uh, nitinol, you can bend it a million times and it still maintains its configuration. And obviously you need the bigger core samples, particularly for some specimens within the pancreas. Bigger means better for everything in the pancreas? And not necessarily. I mean, uh, the reason that we chose pancreas as, the, as, the, as an area of interest in the study is because uh, most pancreatic cancers happen in the head of the pancreas and those are the lesions that will be navigated through the duodenum. So that was the reason to have pancreatic mass lesions. And we had another cohort of patients in whom you really need histological tissue and those are patients with stromal cell tumors and we wanted to compare to see one, whether it's going to have a nice flexibility right. and two, whether it gives core. And so what uh, type of patient, what, we've talked a little bit about the type of patient already. Uh, how did you design this study? How did you set it up, decide on sample size, etc. in this study? Well, this is a prospective study. This is not a randomized trial. Um, the sample size was designed um, based on the number of times you will get a histological tissue using your regular FNA needle. Right. So based on that, we came up with a sample size and then uh, within the cohort, we, do, we desire to have two groups of patients, one who will have therapeutic interventions right. and then another group of patients who will require uh, just biopsies. And what did you find? Uh, you enrolled about 32 patients or so, is that right? Yeah, we enrolled about 38, mm -hmm. we enrolled a total of 50 patients, right. 38 for diagnostic interventions and 12 for therapeutic interventions. So the therapeutic interventions, this needle works like any other needle. It should allow the passage of a 0, 3, 5 inch guide wire right. across the needle and it worked equally well for performing drainages uh, either transduodenally or transgastric and we were also able to perform transrectal interventions and for all the biopsies uh, a predominant of them were pancreatic masses and we accessed them through through the duodenum right. to confirm maneuverability and to check for histological tissue we accessed them through the stomach and stromal tumors to see if there's histological specimen and uh as far as its performance characteristics, obviously it's not randomized, but in comparison to previous studies with other 19-gauge needles, what did you find? Well, the previous 19-gauge needles, uh, the only study that, uh, that used a 19-gauge needle across different parts of the pancreas was the true-cut biopsy needle. Right. So that biopsy needle had a success rate of close to 80% when you look at pancreatic body or tail masses. Right. And then when you go into the duodenum for pancreatic head masses, the diagnostic yield was less than 10%. In this case, we had a diagnostic yield of more than 90% and all passes were transduodenal. Mm. And how did you find actually passing it out the end of the scope, which isn't necessarily discussed right. uh, in, the, uh, in the study, but subjectively, uh, I know that the results objectively were very good. How right. did it feel passing this out the end of the scope as far as when you had torque on the scope, etc.? Um, you don't have to withdraw the scope back into the stomach. Right. which is what we usually do with a mm -hmm. conventional needle because it's very stiff. Here, if you can move your scope to the second portion of the duodenum and shorten the scope like your ERCP scope, right. then there's absolutely no problem uh, fixing the needle to the echoendoscope. And this is the maneuver we also use for both 22 and 25 gauge needles. Right. 
And so can you see then, from therapeutic and diagnostic, this seemed to be superior to previous 19-gauge needles? Yeah, without a doubt. And so for which cases specifically, going forward, you have options of, what is it, a 22, a 25, and a 19-gauge needle? Okay. You want to outline those three types of needles and where you would start with one versus the other, or would you always start with a 19-gauge? You want to give us some, some guidance on that? I think a 22 gauge needle and a 25 gauge needle works equally well for all transgastric and transesophageal biopsies. Right. There's no problem at all. For transduodenal passes, all studies have shown that again 22 and 25 work equally well, except that the 25 gauge needle has an 8 percentage point superiority over the 22 gauge needle just because it's more flexible given its thin caliber. The 19 gauge needle is always used for all interventions because you, you have to right. pass a guide by a thrower and also for cyst aspirations. So the, the, the flexible 19 gauge needle will have a role for the above two indications for performing your cyst aspirations right. and uh, for interventions. But when you require a core tissue, a big chunk of tissue, it was almost impossible using the previous 19 gauge. Now with this needle, you can get your histological core tissue anywhere you want it. And then if you want to replace the 22 and a 25 gauge needle with a 19 gauge, you can, except that the needle is much more expensive than conventional needles in the market. And uh, one, other, one other question in regards to indications. What about diagnosis of chronic pancreatitis? Uh, this wasn't studied in this study. Do you right. see that maybe this 19 gauge needle could be looked at to, to diagnose chronic pancreatitis. It might be get better samples than previously. What are your thoughts on that? I think uh, for any benign diagnosis, mm -hmm. histology is much more comfortable than cytology because that's what we do when, we, yeah. when you have a tumor in the esophagus. We want to take a big chunk of tissue and if there's no cancer, we biopsy again. And if there's no cancer, we are fairly comfortable. Something else is going on. So intuitively, if you get a big chunk of tissue from the pancreas in a benign disease like chronic pancreatitis and if it does not show cancer, it's reassuring. But one has to be very careful. In the pancreas, you want to use a smaller caliber needle for a benign disease right. because of the risk of post-ERCP pancreatitis. In this study, the sample size was small, only 38 patients. We never had a complication, mm -hmm. but one has to be mindful about the large caliber needle for a benign disease. So you think the main complications in a larger sample size, you're worried about pancreatitis and bleeding primarily? Bleeding has never been a problem in the EUS literature. Unlike mm -hmm. ERCP and sphincterotomy, bleeding was never a problem. Pancreatitis happens to be a problem, but again, it's less than 1% of patients who get right. pancreatitis. So if you have to biopsy a solid pancreatic mass lesion, 19 gauge will not be a problem. But to go through a normal pancreas with minimal change chronic pancreatitis, I think one has to be a little bit careful. And uh, as far as these larger needles, other tricks that you think are required or other things that people have to watch out for besides pancreatitis? I think when you use a 19 gauge needle, unlike a 22 or a 25 gauge needle, you can go into a mass lesion and then just move your needle back and forth about 16 or 17 times. It's a big needle. It's going to cause bleeding. So it's very important to go into different parts of the mass and just move the needle two or three times and then gradually fan it along so that you get good quality specimen with less bleeding. If you keep beating the same place over and over, you will find more blood than, uh, than viable tissue. Very good. So you, your feeling, obviously, is there's a, a big market for this 19-gauge nitinol uh, needle, obviously. I think so, because what we need to do next is to perform a randomized trial, right. comparing this needle with conventional 22 and 25 gauge, and then see which needle will give you a faster diagnosis. EUS is all about efficiency. If a 19-gauge needle gives you more tissue in one pass, then obviously it's a much better needle to use right. than a regular needle where you have to do about two or three passes. But that's a study that needs to be done. Well, I'd like to thank you for coming out. It's a, f a fantastic study, and I think uh, other studies are going to follow in, in this suit. Uh, and uh, I think this really will change EUS dramatically, particularly going forward for further randomized stu studies. Thank you very much.